Hello, scientific writers. This is video number two in my experiments with ChatGPT series. This time I gave ChatGPT the prompt to help me find some new scientific literature. And I started with the paper that was published at the end of 2022, and it got its page numbers at the beginning of 2023. So I knew about this paper and I knew the title and the topic and I wanted to see if I could start with an open-ended search and get ChatGPT to lead me to that specific paper. So let's see what happened. I'll go to the computer screen now and then give you my takeaway message. And I was trying to see if I could get to this article that I'm aware of. It's called Empagliflozin in Patients with Chronic Kidney Disease. And I wanted to see if ChatGPT would get me to this paper. So this is a paper that was published on November 4th, 2022, online at the New England Journal of Medicine. And it, it received its page numbers in early January, 2023. Okay, so that will be important later when we come back to this. So I wanted to see if ChatGPT would talk about this paper or, or get to it, because this is one of the most recent ones in this particular field. So I asked, Chat GPC, what are the most important unmet needs for chronic kidney disease? And within two or three seconds, it gave me a list. It said there are several unmet needs for chronic kidney disease. And this list uh, briefly said better treatments, more effective therapies, improved access to kidney transplants and dialysis, more research to identify the causes, greater awareness and education, more affordable, and accessible treatment options, better management of comorbidities, and development of better biomarkers. So that's, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good answer. And because I was trying to get to that specific paper, I decided to ask it to go into more detail uh, on number one, better treatments. And so I asked, what are the best treatments for patients with chronic kidney disease? So this was my follow-up question. The answer I got was, the best treatment for patients with chronic kidney disease, CKD, depends on the specific stage of the disease and the individual's overall health. The main goal of treatment for CKD is to slow the progression of the disease, manage symptoms and complications, and prevent further damage to the kidneys. Some of the most effective treatments include medications, lifestyle changes, dialysis, transplant and preventative treatment. So medications, again, I was trying to get it to, to see if it would get to that specific article. And so I looked at the medications bullet a little more closely and it, it mentioned ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. Now I knew that wasn't all of the medications. I just showed you the paper in the New England Journal of Medicine with empagliflozin. And so I wanted to get to that. It didn't mention it here. And so I followed up with another question. What are the best medications for chronic kidney disease and which companies make them? And then it says, there are several medications that are commonly used to treat chronic kidney disease and its underlying causes. These include ACE inhibitors and ARBs, which it mentioned in the previous answer and it, it names some companies that make those. It also listed diuretics, phosphorus binders, vitamin D analogs, and apoiotin alpha. But it did not mention empagliflozin. So I asked it specifically, what about using empagliflozin in patients with chronic kidney disease? You didn't mention that medication. So now it says empagliflozin is a type of medication known as a sodium glucose transporter 2 inhibitor. It is primarily used to treat type 2 diabetes by helping kidneys remove glucose from the blood, but it has also been studied for its potential benefits in patients with chronic kidney disease. And it goes into a little bit about clinical trials. And it says the use of empagliflozin in patients with CKD is not yet widely accepted and more studies are needed to confirm its long-term safety and efficacy 
in this population. So I thought it was interesting that it's, it's, you know, it's mentioning it, but it's giving all these cautions, saying it's not yet widely accepted and more studies are needed. And so I had another follow-up question. Why do you say more studies are needed to confirm the long-term safety of empagliflozin? Please provide references. And I didn't mean to put a question mark there, but I did anyway. Um, and so it says empagliflozin, Jardians, is a relatively new medication. And while it has been shown to have potential benefits in patients with chronic kidney disease and type 2 diabetes, more long-term studies are needed to confirm its safety and efficacy in this population. And then it mentions the Impareg outcome trial with 7,000 patients. And it mentions the Credence trial that had 4,400 patients. And then it says, in summary, empagliflozin has shown promising results in reducing the risk of cardiovascular death and kidney failure in patients with type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. And again, it says, but more long-term studies are needed to confirm its safety and efficacy in this population. All right, so it mentioned two clinical trials, but it did not mention the paper I was looking for, which is this one, empagliflozin in patients with chronic kidney disease. So it's, it's right there in the title of the paper, what it's about. It's definitely for that patient population and chat GPT is not mentioning it. And it mentioned two trials, but I asked for references. It didn't give me references. It just gave me the names of the trial. So I asked it to be more specific. I said, what are the references? Publications are clinicaltrials.gov of those studies. And now it gives me the information. The IMPAREG outcome trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2015. The clinical trial registration number is shown here. The Credence trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2019. The clinical trial registration number is here. These trials are considered as landmark trials as they have provided strong evidence for the cardiovascular and reno renal benefits of SGL2 inhibitors in patients with type 2 diabetes and chronic kidney disease. So now it's sounding a bit more positive. Instead of saying more studies are needed, there are no long-term data, but it still didn't mention that study that I'm trying to get to. So I asked directly, what about the 2022 publication of empagliflozin in chronic kidney disease? You didn't mention it. And ChatGPT says, I apologize for the oversight, but there have been recent publications in 2022 that have looked at the use of empagliflozin in patients with chronic kidney disease. So it gives a couple titles, Impareg Outcome, and then it talks about Impa Kidney, published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2022. But this title is not the same title as the paper I was looking for that was published in 2022. So... Uh, it's another one, but it's not the same one. It gives a little bit of information about the studies, which, you know, is accurate. So it's, it's pretty impressive, but it's still not getting to this paper that I know exists. And so I ask it, are there any additional studies published in 2022 or 2023? You know, because the page numbers were not assigned until 2023 for that paper, even though it was published in November. So I asked it, are there any additional studies about empagliflozin in patients with chronic kidney disease? So that's, that's actually the title. So I put the title in the question and then I get this answer. My knowledge cutoff is 2021. So I cannot confirm whether there are any additional studies published specifically in 2022 or 2023 about this topic. But I can tell you that there has been ongoing research and clinical trials in this area. Um, so yeah, that was pretty interesting. Um, I would say if you are new to a field and you wanna get kind of a high level overview about that field before you start getting into you know, scientific papers that are hard to read a lot of times, you know, before you start reading the most recent review articles. So you could come into chat GPT or something like it and ask some of these broad questions, like what are the most important unmet needs in this field? And it will, it, maybe it will give you something like this. So I think this bullet list was really quite nice, um, quite well done. And if I were new to this field, which I am kind of new to this field, uh, but if I were completely new, like this is the beginning for me, 
This list of eight unmet needs would be really helpful when I start reading scientific papers uh, because it, it kind of gives me a roadmap of what to look for and it gives me some context of why, uh, why papers in the field are studying certain topics because they're probably trying to address one of these eight unmet needs. And there might be more unmet needs and maybe these are not prioritized in the way that medical researchers agree with. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just saying maybe. So I think using this kind of tool to give yourself some context before you go into the papers and start reading them, it might be really good. It might be a really great way to, to approach a new area. Okay, so here are my takeaways from this experiment with ChatGPT. Takeaway number one was I had to keep asking. So it didn't give me a complete answer to the prompt that I was expecting, so I had to keep asking. I had to make the question more specific or lead it in a general direction for it to even get close to what I was trying to accomplish. Takeaway number two is you have to have enough knowledge already to know what questions to ask. So if you don't already know the topic, ChatGPT may not be a good way to get to where you're trying to go knowledge-wise because you have to keep guiding it. Or at least in my experiment, I had to keep guiding it. And I knew where I was guiding it to. So if I didn't have that knowledge, if I didn't know which questions to ask next, it might be a dead end very quickly with a lot of incomplete information. Takeaway number three, and this was really surprising to me, is that it's not up to date. It said its most recent information was from 2021. Okay, this is 2023 when we're doing this video and when I did this experiment. So I don't know why an AI can't search the current databases, but it told me, as you saw, that its knowledge base ended at 2021. So you're not gonna find the most up-to-date references, even if you know what questions to ask and where to take chat GPT. It's not going to give you 2023 references, at least right now. So maybe in the future it will be improved to where it is as up-to-date as PubMed is, or Google Scholar or whatever databases it's searching. Why don't you try this same experiment? Go on chat GPT with a recent paper that you know about. See if you can get it to give you that paper. Please let me know in the comments how that turned out. I'm really curious how this works for other people. All right, I hope that was helpful. I will see you next time and happy writing.